Brad, TRT for Warriors, coming at you with a, another video. I ended up finding this super cool NASA Army Ranger study where they tested a bunch of guys. And I read some of the older studies. They kind of had like some uh, preliminary studies at this, at a Pennington Biomedical Research Center. So they did like a a model in which they like did some test tube stuff and I think it was rat or some sort of model. They did that. Then they did a 200 milligram study which a bunch of veterans or a bunch of active duty guys. I didn't actually see what the conclusions of that was. They didn't release it publicly. It's like locked up in some institution pay subscription kind of thing. But they did two, 200 milligrams. And I guess, okay, so it's in the in the, the top here. So previously young men um, administered 200 milligrams a week of testosterone and anthate during 28 days of energy deficit, gained lean muscle mass and lost total lean mass and it controls, optimizing for performance of soldier study number one, ops one, so that's the first study. Despite that benefit, physical performance deteriorated similarly in both groups. However, some experimental limitations may have precluded detection of performance benefits as performance measures employed lacked military relevance and the energy deficit employed did not elicit the magnitude of stress typically experienced by soldiers conducting operations. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Additionally, testosterone administered required weekly injections elicited Superphysiological concentrations, <laughs> about that, and marked suppression of endogenous testosterone upon cessation. Well, I mean, okay, I don't know. Okay, you know why, but why would you say that? Okay. Therefore, this follow-on study will address these limitations, examine testosterone's efficacy for preserving soldier performance during strenuous operations. Methods and Ops 2, so the new one, this one. 32 males will participate in a randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blind trial. After baseline testing, participants will be administered either testosterone and decanate 750 milligrams or placebo before completing four consecutive five-day cycles, simulating a multi-stressor sustained military operation. It will consist of two low-stress days, 1,000 calories, exercise-induced energy deficit, with eight hours of sleep, followed by three high stress calorie days, 3,000 calories, four hours of sleep a night. A 23 day recovery period will allow the operation, will follow the operation. Um, military relevant physical performance is the primary outcome. Secondary outcomes include four compartment body composition, muscle and whole body protein turnover, intermuscular mechanisms, biochemistries, cognitive, and mood. Okay, materials and methods, eligibility criteria. So when I read, there was another one that I had read, and so this completely blew me away. When they did all of the testing for the guys, these guys had 500 nanogram per deciliter freaking test. So they're all pretty much hypogonadal already. Like it was, it blew my mind when I, when I read it, I was like, okay, so you're selecting from 1% of the 1% of the population who can even do this work. Then you're going to select for another 1% of that percentage. Who's even going to do infantry stuff. Then you're going to select to the people who even can get into an, a ranger program, some sort of feeder program to get into a, a ranger selection. Then you pass selection. You are a ranger. You're zero, 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 zero. Add a couple of more zeros on top of that. 0% of the population, point 0.1. <laughs> and you're those guys. And you are hypogonadal, that's like supposedly the top performing, top highest IQ that can that can do the work, like guys in our country. Like 
it's completely insane. And I and I, it's also too, I was really irritated too because I doubt that they were even informed of it. You don't know this kind of stuff as a regular guy. You don't really know how the assay is built, what's detailed in it. So when I saw it, when I saw the chart, and I'm like, it was it was also an end malt, so I'd like convert it, and I'm looking at it, and the average was 500. So the highest guy was 750, and the other dudes are like 500. And, and some guys were even at the cutoff, like that below. Like this is this is nuts. Okay, so here's these treadmill stuff, design stuff, cognitive functions. Ethical considerations. So I guess she still has to do the rest of her study. So the OPS2 trial aims to determine whether a single dose of long-acting testosterone and decanate safely and steadily maintains normal testosterone concentrations and enhances military-relevant measures for performance while attenuating muscle and total mass loss without impairing cognitive function during and in recovery from multi-stressor operations. So, I ended up reaching out to Dr. Aleska Novolasky. Let's see how you spell it. Oh gosh, I added an N. It's not an N, because there's an N in front of her name, that's why I did that. Uh, Veronoski, V-A-R-A-N-O-S-K-E. So, what's pretty cool, they have a NASA, she's a NASA scientist, she is working on loan, I think, to the military. And then you have this Pennington Research Lab that's involved, and you got Oak Ridge, you got a bunch of different people or whatnot. And they're all kind of involved in this, um, in this different, in the, these different studies. And I, I was really impressed. I, uh, I reached out to her, I sent her an email, and I said, hey, you know, I want to see if you have other documents on this. She only had the one so far. And uh, I guess they still have to complete the study. There's just other stuff that they, they had to do. And I was kind of going back and forth with her and whatnot just to kind of get that stuff out of the way. And then my other email I sent her was like, hey, you, know, you might want to try testosterone-based cream, uh, testosterone-based sublingual, and kind of see what options you know this gives you or whatnot. Now, she said, you know, there's obviously because of the study design and ethical stuff, of either low dosing or overdosing of it, so you don't want to do that. And then also, it has to be you know completely standardized for like all the dudes. And you can do that, but it's kind of there's a limitation that's there. But I mentioned to her, hey, this is something that's interesting, and I, it's important to do it because you're limited by your design in terms of the ester. So the ester might cause you problems that you don't know about. And um, especially too, and you know, I think at scale, when we're talking about veterans, we're talking about uh, or your military in general, then veterans and TBI and all different types of people like that. There's CYP stuff that's going on with the clearance of the drug, and so you just get around that by just using the base and see what happens if it's just testosterone base, you know, in that or whatnot. Um, in my email, I told her thank you because I wanted to congratulate her, and I told her, you know, you are the first person who's ever done this. You know, I told her, I don't know if you realize this, but. You just proved 750 milligrams is safe. Nobody else has done this. This is the highest study that we have, and it basically lays a sledgehammer to the endocrine society. You know, no longer can the endocrine society say, oh, you know, 200 milligrams is the, is the basic dose, okay? Well, this concept proves that, well, you need graded dosing. Graded dosing is a, is a clinical thing that you can do. It's one, it's ethical. So if you know you're going to go on a drive, you know you're going to be going on an airplane, you're going to be doing some strenuous kind of stuff for school, sports, not in a competitive sports, but in a fun sports, fun, that's not competitive, that's legal, uh, <laughs> for extracurricular activities, I guess better to say, extracurricular activities with Bay. there you go, um, that graded dosing exists for a reason and it can be applied, and there's no reason that you can't do it. Um, this idea, too... This also kind of this idea also that the that the assay that Dr. Tom Travison created is real, which is not, 
his direct quote, if you haven't heard me before, is the work we do is epidemiological, cannot be applied to an individual person or particular clinical con context. Meaning, don't sue me because you didn't follow the guidelines. Because the guidelines state we treat symptoms, not a specific dose. Very clear. Don't sue Dr. Tom Travison because you screwed up. The, you know, just because he, he made the assay doesn't mean jack. And he'll tell you about the problems of the design of his, of his assay. He just did it so they have an assay. They, you know, put Harvard guy name on assay done. That's why it's done. It's not done for you to apply it to individuals. It's just done so you have something to work with. Um, and once we have a population of people, then we can apply our 750 milligram study to that, to that assay and then build it up. Because two, we don't understand what's happening with graded dosing and what's going on with stress. And, you know, I was talking, you know, I, I was talking with a friend about, you know, I really don't understand how, if there's a mechanism in terms of the latex cells or LH and FSH or something, it goes on with the balls, the brain signals, that if you're a regular dude, you're not on testosterone, you're, you add a bunch of stress, if somehow there's like a, a feedback mechanism of how much test can then be created from the stress that you've, you've induced. So I think there's an opportunity here for other studies as well, because I, you know, I'd like to understand, okay, so if someone's general testosterone is a thousand, whatever that number is, then they're free testosterone. How much albumin and SHBG is just gonna bind all this up and then eventually just dump it to then force you to make more and then give you this high flux of, of more testosterone than you would normally produce based off of the energy that you expend. Just made that up. No idea if it's right, but it sounds interesting. And I, I you know, I'm, I made sure that I emailed her because I was like, you know, this is this is really important. We need to be tracking these studies, and we also need to be thanking the researchers because well, these people never get thank you letters. They never get told thank you for the work that you did, and um, I find it fascinating that you know you're going to have some NASA people going out on a limb and actually doing this stuff, and. Uh, I told her to reach out to Derek, Mr. Moore, Delts, Moore Trend, um, and uh, said, hey, you know, if you want to make the best effort to, you know, to get the word out there about your study, go on this show and go talk about it because you know, you're going to make the most impact and reach the most people. And it's a huge opportunity um, to get out there. Um, and I want you guys also to go onto LinkedIn, LinkedIn and uh, connect with Alyssa Veronowski. Uh, connect with her, send her a thank you message because we really need to support the people who are doing this work who also are the ones who are gonna be helping us to destroy the endocrine society and then completely shut them down for good. Because if the science keeps coming up against their nonsense, they just gotta shut down. They're gonna have to just get folded in the lipid society and we'll never hear about them again and then whatever androgen group comes up next which i may have to start myself um because i guess dr morgenthaler is like retiring or something they're doing some weird stuff at androgen society i don't know they had a bunch of two they had like a i was reading like the last thing they had like a bunch of like clinical trial stuff for like different like modalities or whatever like orals and not pellets but just different oral applications or you know whatever it's like if i know it doesn't work they know it doesn't work so why are you doing it it was just weird i mean i i can understand okay in a general context you want to do this kind of stuff it's actually something that may help you know i, I think maybe like a sublingual testosterone might work at, at, a, at a commercial level for something that's like an extra that you you have and this military application, it could work for that, but it's not something that you can use for TRT. So I understand what they're doing, but I'm like, why? Why spend the time on it? Doesn't make any sense. Um, we do need our own TRT industry 501c3. Don't know why this hasn't happened yet. Kind of confused by it. I guess I have to be the one to create it. But, um, we don't even have a lobbying group. Like, no one's doing the lobbying. Why not? Um, so strange. Um, 
so I was really impressed with the with the study that they did. I read through some of the the, the pre predecessor studies, and I guess that the the number number two study was in there. I read the original guy who did the the other lab stuff. He he worked with like the Massachusetts lab that's up there um, to initially do the do the research. Um, I think this is really important that we dig more into these military studies and kind of track and find out where the stuff is and also in other governments as well so russia's and croatia and balkans and you know just different places um china's fi find their research studies that are military studies and send them to me um, especially super soldier stuff and cool anabolic studies that sort of thing i'm going to be diving more into this for um, my eventual master's and PhD. So I'm doing all the research now that I can. Um, trying to get some tempo under me and start really digging into this stuff. So then once I start doing it, you know, I have a better broad knowledge. I don't have to waste my time on different stuff. And I can, or even if I have to reread different stuff, I kind of have a general idea of what it is. And then I can kind of grasp, you know, where it's at. And I can use your help because obviously I haven't read a lot of these studies and nobody else has either. So they're just kind of floating around. And uh, until I looked up military and testosterone, it never came up on any any research that I had done. I don't know why, it just never happened. Um, somebody had said something about super soldier stuff. I'm like, okay, well, let's do some super soldier stuff. Military testosterone, throw it in Google Scholar, see what happens. And found this paper. So um, definitely send me more of this stuff. I really do appreciate you guys for taking the time to check this out i have set up a sub stack um, i'm gonna be doing an article once a month ish be once every other month depending on how i feel um i obviously can't keep up with doing videos there's that so um but go on to tier chief warriors in facebook um, if you're not already in there, get in there because there's doctors and there's patients. So if you have silly questions or you're a doctor, you don't know what you're talking about and you want to learn, go in there. Ask the doctors questions because there's doctors and they know what they're talking about. Um, get added in the TRT for Warriors Facebook group. Check out my Substack, read my article that I wrote. And also send me topics because I need topics to do articles on. Um, Eventually, this is going to become a paid product where I can do articles, fund my education, and my living situation, and my medications. It's not being covered by the government because I'm fighting the government for benefits, and they won't pay me. So, go on to Facebook, add stuff to the Substack. I really do appreciate you guys for taking the time to check out my videos, and you guys have an awesome weekend.